Hey and welcome to this Windows channel and this is a video to review and uh, take a quick look basically of the latest creators update build of Windows 10 which is uh, build 14971 released today at 1 p.m. Eastern Time 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific which is pretty much the time you know, when they know that they're going to release a build uh, that's pretty much the time that they use so uh, basically the build was announced around 12 30 uh, 30 minutes before the um, the official release uh, by Donna Sarkar with her uh, team in Nigeria which was insiders for good which was really really nice video on uh, Twitter and so at 1 p.m. behold 14971 was released and was available for download so uh, first I want to address um, an issue a lot of people and I mean uh, more than I'm usual, usually um, accustomed to see seem to have problems upgrading in these builds and uh, which is not my case my, my upgrades go really well but I see a lot of you so today a lot of you when I actually posted my news bulletin said hey I saw that you were uh, talking about slowing release for the insider build and I, I don't see it I still see 14 uh, 931 so uh, just be patient because between the time that the uh, slowing release and the image files are available it always takes a few days so uh, if you are waiting for that for the image files uh, just wait a few days and uh, I'm pretty sure next week you'll see uh, either tomorrow Friday or next week you'll see uh, the um, I image files available for 14965 which was released in the slow ring uh, yesterday so 14971 installed flawlessly once again for me uh, no problems no issues at all yet I got four comments today of people having uh, issues with the install and having blue screen for the first try that they did but all four of you have also said that the next time that you've retried to up upgrade again everything was okay so I would guess that uh, maybe there's a little glitch in the install but it seems that everything was all right so um, I've of course tried it for many hours before I would talk about it because I want to I want to you know try and do a lot of things I did some uh, bug bash uh, things uh, with the uh, movies and TV app and um, so I wanted to make sure that everything is all right I watched YouTube videos uh, I do have one glitch that is not announced and it's with the uh, edge browser I just want to say this right away before I forget uh, when you're on YouTube and you click videos uh, you click you know videos and things are working and everything seems to be all right then suddenly you click videos and the list and nothing happens anymore so there's a little something there that was not in the previous builds so I would guess there's a little glitch in edge from time to time uh, but uh, that wasn't before it, it it's really unique to this build uh, because I do watch a lot of YouTube videos and uh, it's the first time that it happens um, okay so what's new in this build because first of the first things that people want to know is what is new in this build exactly so uh, a little bit of things but once again not a lot but one of the most important one that I really like is the possibility of Microsoft Edge reading EPUB books so if you've downloaded uh, some uh, books some ebooks that are in EPUB format and you were wondering what do you need to read those well Microsoft Edge has what it takes now uh, the only thing your EPUB books need to be uh, without DRM without you know some kind of protection but if there is no protection and here's one that I've actually uh, checked out it's the uh, Paul Tarot book for uh, Windows 10 which is the Windows 10 field guide and it works really really well I mean I can actually read the book and uh, it's working great so uh, it's nice to see that um, the Edge browser is now actually picking up EPUB book readout so you don't need any other app if uh, you want to read and it uh, goes into some kind of a reading mode if you want 
you can adjust font, you can adjust the size of the pages and so on. So that's cool. With no apps, with nothing else, you can read EPUB as long as they don't have any protection, as long as they are available for reading. So that's one thing that I like uh, a lot about this latest build. Um, what else do we have? Of course, uh, today there was a little announcement about the Office Hub for um, insiders. So um, the Office Hub is basically for those that don't have Microsoft Office. There was this, um, you know, this this little uh, pop up that said, you know, get Office and everything. They have updated that. So this build contains that update, basically. What else do we have? Well, basically, uh, if you were looking for the Paint 3D app, you know, in the past few builds, I was telling you, you got to go to the store and get Paint 3D Preview. Now it's part of this build. So you don't have to download it as a separate app. The Paint 3D app or the Paint 3D Preview is available and is um, in the build so no need to download it it is already there in this build so another cool little thing here uh, bringing 3d to everyone as they say and so uh, this is another cool thing um, another little thing that was added here uh, you know in these builds um, that we had previously and you know in the regular windows version when you uh, want to have the Command prompt, well, when you right click on the start menu, it was the command prompt that was here. They've changed that because they want to put PowerShell now. PowerShell will be the default command prompt. And there's a reason for that. It's that Microsoft wants you to use PowerShell for a very simple reason. Is that PowerShell actually will let you use all the command that you want in the command prompt. So basically, since it's compatible 100% with the command prompt, um, they're kind of thinking, well, why do we need a command prompt and a PowerShell when we can have just a PowerShell that still has all the commands of the command prompt? So I think that's a, a pretty good idea. And uh, basically, um, it replaces the command prompt cmd.exe. And if you try with uh, Windows X uh, and get, you'll get, of course, the PowerShell. Now, this is what you're going to get for now and from now on. And I think that um, is pretty good. And one interesting fact is that PowerShell is actually celebrating its 10th year anniversary this week. So uh, you can go to the Channel 9, which is Microsoft's video channel to uh, talk about it and sharing, they're sharing a lot of little things and details about this. So 10 years of PowerShell this week. Okay, what else do we have? Improved typing experience for Chinese, conversions for Japanese, and improved usage when typing Japanese IME. Um, get Office, of course, Get Office was one of the things that a lot of people were talking about, about how complicated the Get Office was now, Get Office was something that a lot of people were kind of wondering how it works and what it does. The Get Office now is a little more descriptive of what you could get. So the Get Office is not as it was in the previous versions. So um, before Get Office was largely a collection of links to help you get started with Office. Uh, now the new and improved app will help you explore and manage your office experience, discover and launch the apps that you see uh, in office documents. So um, that's pretty much what we have here. One thing that uh, we need to say that was removed, um, if you actually remember, there was a um, little uh, feature that I talked about in one of the previous builds. And that feature was to uh, basically, um, you know, get a um, kind of a uh, snooze action on a tab in Microsoft Edge, which provided you with uh, a Cortana reminder. Okay, well, this time at this moment, we'll have a reminder that you have to go back to this website and so on. Um, 
What they did is according to the feedback, it was not an interesting feature, so they've removed it. So it's not gonna be part of the creator's update. They've just thought, mm, okay, uninteresting. People don't want this. Um, when you're doing uh, inking, so when you're uh, in different apps that have inking, there was like a little cursor that was blinking. It's not gonna be uh, visible anymore. Improve reliability when using the protractor in inking and sketchpad once again. So when you were in the uh, different options, uh, inking was not always working well. So the sketchpad and everything will have now a more reliable experience. There was still some crashing going on for some people. So uh, this is of course being, uh, it's fixed here basically. We've updated some of our desktop wizards, including map a network drive extract from zip to now be proportionally sized when moving across monitors. Uh, fix an issue where magnifiers, keyboard shortcuts sometimes wouldn't work on the lock screen. They fixed an issue where you could result in sometimes uh, basically not being able to completely remove files in the windows.old folder using disk cleanup. Uh, enabled uh, auth support or OAuth support for Yahoo mail accounts. This will improve sync reliability. Uh, fixed an issue we're trying to shut down the PC while certain device manager dialog were open, resulting in PC being stuck at restarting screen. Fix an issue as closing multiple tabs with middle click and edge uh, width of the tabs might change. Fix an issue or copy link option when right clicking the hyperlink on Microsoft Edge didn't work. Fix an issue where it changed the size of the Microsoft Edge window uh, and then closed the app by closing final tab. The next time Edge is launched, it would once again be default size rather than retaining the preferred size. Fix the issue where pin times, pin tabs in Microsoft Edge were not being restored. Uh, made a number of uh, translation improvements, including for Chinese speakers and so on. Fixed an issue where if you already uh, hand a notification expanded in the action center, clicking the chevron to expand the second notification will result in it expanding them immediately closing. Fix an issue where uh, preferred start menu width might not be preserved after rebooting. There are some known issues in this uh, version and uh, one of them that I want to talk about because it was there in the last build and I had and I was a victim of that. And it's still here in this build. Uh, and it's that um, basically uh, stores, uh, app stores like um, or apps, sorry, search as store, photos, people, uh, settings, um, news, um, and so on might actually open uh, on their own if you've not been using your PC, if your PC was inactive for a period of time, all these apps actually open up and um, you know, it just happens randomly. So uh, to stop these apps from launching on their own, you have to unmaximize the app before closing it. So for example, um, if the settings were opening up or the store, I'm gonna use the store as an example. Store app was opening up, then what you need to do is make sure that you unmaximize and then you close and it won't open again. So that was one of the, the problems in the last build and it's still here in this build. Uh, navigating to settings, system and battery will crash the settings app. So if you go into uh, settings, and you go into system, let's try it out here, and you go into battery, it should crash the settings app. And yes, it does. Here it goes. <laughs> uh, using keyboard monitor odd keys to adjust brightness won't work as expected. So the desired brightness change could be done via the action center if you want to, but it will, the, the keys, the action keys won't, the odd keys won't work. Um, and previously announced, um, on the Windows holographic shell is going to be included in the upcoming Windows 10 Creators update. Today's uh, flight, you will see that the Windows holographic first run app, while you will be able to launch the app and walk through the first few screens, it won't detect any hardware. So anything that has to do with 
uh, Windows holographic. So you see here, Windows holographic first run, but it won't detect hardware and it won't work. And this is something that's coming to the edition this um, this year and well, nine, next year, sorry, 2017. So um, apart from that, there doesn't seem to be any other issues, but of course, issues pop up um, as people are using it. And that's why there's, of course, the uh, bug bash. So uh, of course, if you wanna have fun and uh, help the Windows team and make our Windows better, you can go into the feedback hub, check out what bug bash stuff there is. Uh, you see here on the right, I've uh, completed seven quests. I've also provided five feedback um, and, and more is to come. So, you know, check it out and uh, make sure that uh, you're uh, helping everybody with these builds. Uh, apart from that, it's a stable build. I haven't had any crashes, any problems, except like I said, sometimes on YouTube, you click the video, nothing happens. So you just close down Edge, restart, go back to YouTube, and it works fine for a while. Uh, but there seems to be a little something there. And apart from that, seems to be another good build of a Windows 10 Creators update. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel. You'll be informed when new videos are online. If you are an insider in the fast ring, why not give me your take on what do you think of this build? Have you seen anything good, anything bad? Why not share your experience with this latest build of Windows 10? Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy our videos.